Hi everyone. In this lesson, we will look at local political life. It might surprise you to know this, but Pompeii had an active political life and they had elections. Just as today in Australia, we have elections, we have to vote for the Prime Minister, we have to vote in the state government elections, we have to local, vote in local council elections. Pompeii also had elections and people who wanted to have positions of power in the city. It had a Roman constitution imposed on it after the Social War in 80 BC. This laid down the political structure. Only males could vote. So they did have elections, they did have voting, but it was more restricted than what we have today. Magistrates administered the city. They had to be elected and they were assisted by the Ordo Decurium, a council of about 100, mostly ex-magistrates. The Decurian Council was open only to those who met the following requirements. They had to be freeborn, they had good character, and they had a reputable profession. Gladiators, actors and executioners were not allowed. So it's quite interesting and in some ways I think it might be better than what we have today. I mean even today anyone can run for parliament, anyone can run for political office. Uh, but back then you actually had to have a good character and they didn't allow certain professions. And that's quite interesting because if you look at America, for example, they had President Ronald Reagan, who used to be an actor. And they've had Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was the governor of California. And, um, you know, if it was like ancient Rome, they wouldn't have been able to run because actors weren't considered very reputable. Now, they made the, you could be elected to the Decurian Council, which was made up of 100 people. This is a picture from Pompeii which shows where the Decurian Council used to meet. So that's where they used to have meetings and so on. The role of the Decurian Council. It controlled civic finances and public religion. It supervised the construction of public buildings and it oversaw the use of standard weights and measures. Elections were held in March. Pairs of elected magistrates took office in July and served for one year. There was an established political career pathway, the cursus honorum. A man began his career by standing for Iadel. This was a junior magistracy. It was responsible for the upkeep of the city, the maintenance of public buildings, and supervision of the market. The next office was Doomvir, it was a senior magistracy. It presided over and carried out the decree of the Decurian Council. Remember that group of a hundred people. It administered local finance. It also handled local law cases. Priesthoods. Politics and religion were integral parts of Roman citizenship. The ancient Romans were deeply religious and most people in the ancient world were very religious. Many who were magistrates also held priesthoods. The Augustales were priests involved in emperor worship. And this is a statue here of the first emperor of ancient Rome, Augustus, and he ruled for about 40 years. And his original name was Octavian, but later on he was given the name Augustus. And he's very important and he has actually touched your life. And the reason that I say that is that the month of August is named after him. So all your life you've been living with the calendar that we've got and you know the month of August. Well, it's named after him, the first Roman emperor. And he ruled Rome for about 40 years. He's considered probably their, their best emperor ever, one of their, their greatest emperor, their finest emperor. And even during his time, uh, you could be involved in acts where you could worship the emperor. So they actually worshipped him as a, as a god. So he's quite an extraordinary man. That gives us some insight into the local political life of the time.